Chair, comrades, uh, Steve North, I'm here today as a delegate from Salford Trades Council. And I just want to begin by um, bringing a message of solidarity and support for one of our delegates in Salford. And some of you may have heard um, about what happened to the anti-blacklisting campaigner in the construction industry, George Tapp, who is one of, he's a Unite member in Salford, he's one of our delegates, uh, and on a protest um, a few weeks ago outside a construction site in East Manchester against the, the, the known blacklisters, BAM, George was struck by a car, broke both his legs, uh, and had to go into hospital. Um, he's fine, his condition's improving, his legs are obviously in a bad way, uh, and it's going to be a while before he can walk again unaided. Um, we um, immediately organised a support appeal that uh, I've spoken to Rob and the details of that can be circulated after the conference in the next NSN bulletin. Um, but I just want to bring a message of support from George because he would be here today. He sat on a coach all, uh, all night last year to get here and then helped steward the event as well. So I just want to bring that first of all. In addition to... Um oh, and he, and he has said as well, as soon as his legs are getting better, he'll be back on. So I don't think there's going to be any let up for any of the blacklisting firms as long as George is still about. Um, as well as being a delegate from Salford Trades Council, I'm also a Unison member, and um, it's difficult. It's difficult when you come along to, to conferences like this. You know, Unison aren't supporting the National Shop Stewards Network, and obviously the role played by our leadership at this moment in time is not a fantastic one. I think when Steve talks about us treading water within our own sectors, as a local government worker and a Unison member, it feels like we're drowning. Um, We've just gone through a national consultation on pay. Now, the outcome of that is, is that our union has accepted a 1% deal for local government workers. But there are some positive messages that have come out of it. Of all the regions of Unison across the country, two regions advocated rejection. And lo and behold, those were the two regions where in the consultation members voted for rejection. That was my region, the North West, and also the London region. Now, that just shows what a lead can do. Where a lead is given by our leadership, members will respond. And that's particularly important in my region in the North West, and I suppose also in the London region, not known for being bastions of left-wing militancy. When they've come out and given a lead, members have supported that and voted to reject. And we attended Unison Conference last week, and the leadership were given an absolute hammering over the fact that there was a complete abdication of responsibility from them. And uh, they were put under a lot of pressure, and we're confident that they, it's going to be very, very difficult for them to make the same mistake again going forward. As well as that, within my own union, we are, seeing, uh, we are seeing disputes, we are seeing struggles. I know we've got workers in the room from Mid-Yorkshire hospitals. I'm sure they'll speak about their own campaign over the course of the day. But I just want to flag up one last thing before my time finishes, Chair, and that's um, a message of support that I hope we can give from this meeting to future directions workers in Rochdale. Care workers recently outsourced by Rochdale Council in Greater Manchester who are now working for a firm, Future Directions, that is wholly owned, despite being a private company, by an NHS trust. That is the public sector in 21st century Britain. And those workers, some of them are being hit with up to a 42% pay cut. Now, they've already taken four days of action. They're going to be taking another five. I'm sure we can send a message of support. The shop steward would love to have been here today, but obviously they've got a rally in Rochdale. And uh, I'm sure we can send a message of support as well and circulate those details, hopefully, so that we can all show that we're on the side of those workers. Thanks very much. Thanks. My name is Michael Logan. I'm the lead um, rep from, for an organisation called Equinox Care. It's based in London and the South East. Um, we went on strike um, recently because the chief executive imp started to impose um, cuts of between 25 to 30 percent on us on our salaries. Um, even though the money was there, um, he's at the top of the race to the bottom. As a result of this industrial action that we took of an organisation of 120 people, of the two days of strike, 70 percent of the workforce went on strike. Now we know that there are some big organizations that have bigger numbers and surpluses that won't take any action. But I'm here to tell you that even though, because at one point I was the only union rep in the whole organization, and I stood with support from my local branch, Unite Branch 1111, and Rob as well, we stood, we built, up the, we built up the union base, and we got people on the front line. As a result, from 25%, we managed to get them to defer it by 10% for a year. I'm saying that to everyone today that even though you might be a few, you might feel that the odds, the media and everything's against you. 
you can make a difference like I've done and Unite have done. Thank you. Glenn Kelly, uh, Unison Branch Secretary. As a, council, as a council worker this week, I listened intently to the misnamed spending review. Another 10% cut in council budgets as part of the Tories' £11 billion worth of cuts. So cocky and confident are the Tories that their election manifesto to the people of Britain is more austerity and more cuts. But what was worse? So cocky and confident are they? So confident of no political opposition being imposed, they effectively this week wrote New Labour's manifesto as well, which will be austerity continued. Now, Steve did say that we were treading water, and I absolutely agree as a council worker, it feels like we're drowning with the boss's foot uh, on our heads and also being held under by New Labour. 450,000 council workers' jobs gone in three years. 900,000 more jobs are now being said to be cut by 2017. There is open talk of literally councils going bankrupt. And whilst Labour councillors squeal and weep crocodile tears, the reality is every single council has capitulated and imposed the cuts. And that raises a particular responsibility of what of our union leaders' response to that, in particular the likes of unison in local government and health. Well, it's not just a case, unfortunately, that they're fiddling while Rome burns. There's a whole bloody orchestra of them playing, such as their useless lead that they're giving. Their only strategy is to say to branches, good luck, good luck with the fight, we're right behind you. The only problem is about two miles behind us. That is the truth. Branches to be left isolated, picked off one by one. That is a strategy for nothing else other than annihilation. If there was the will, there could undoubtedly be united action across the public and private sector. Take your pick of issues, pay, cuts or privatisation. The reality is it is not the anti-trade union laws that are the block on a general strike in Britain today. It is the cowardice of many of our trade union leaders. <laughs> and comrades, let's be clear that the necessity for a general strike is as important, if not more so, now than it was debated in September. And we have to face up to the task. If the TUC refused to be moved, that then, in effect, we have to go over the tops of their heads to bring together that coalition of genuine fighting trade unions and that they call and name the day for a 24-hour general strike to begin the fight back that our members rightly deserve. Uh, Chris Fernandez, Unison. Uh, Unison, uh, I'm a support worker. I work with people with learning difficulties, challenging behaviours. First of all, I'd like to thank your organisation for giving us support when we went on strike on April the 18th. Um, thank you very much. And also, I'd like to thank the Socialist newspaper which has carried reports about our dispute. Um, I bring greetings from the strikers at further to your conference. Uh, I think there's a, a lesson here for all of us. We were two pit over from the NHS to Fear of Trust, which I just remind you is a charity. And when we were two pit over, we were told our conditions uh, would be safe and won't be attacked. And in 2011, uh, our conditions started to be attacked, especially the nurses, with pay cuts between 10 to 20,000 uh, pounds. They were using an ETO, which uh, I think Labour introduced in 2007, which gives, um, gives power to the bosses. So this time they came for the support workers last October. And what we've managed to do is we've managed to unite those people who were two peed over in, who were in unison and recruit workers who were non-union in, into unison. Uh, I managed to find out doing some research that um, five fear of companies within fear of trust in 2010 and 11 made a 2.1 million surplus which they donated in gift aid to, to the parent company fear of trust because they don't pay any income tax. I found out that the executive directors, uh, four of whom are on over 100,000 a year, to give you one example, 
the remuneration went up of one of them from 109,000 to 112,000. Uh, thank you, Chair. Padraig Mulholland, President of NIPSA, Northern Ireland Public Service Trade Union, um, and a member of the I'm a member of the Committee for a Workers International and the Irish section of that, the Irish Socialist Party. Comrades, first of all, can I thank you for the honour of the opportunity of speaking at this meeting today. These meetings are extremely important to your movement here, but they are equally important to us in Ireland. It gives us an opportunity to learn from you. And can I as well bring to you today the greetings from NIPS's General Council, its National Executive, the General Council met last Friday. It was the first meeting ever of a broad left majority General Council of the Northern Ireland Public Service Union. <laughs> and comrades, at that meeting, we had a serious discussion on the issue of austerity. It merited the discussion that you are having here today. And we had the opportunity, I think, of taking the first steps in turning the movement in Ireland around, preparing the ground and launching a new campaign to combat austerity, take on the bosses and smash the assembly parties who support cuts. We agreed a number of small but I think important steps. First of all, our movement, and NIPS in particular, over the last year or so, has produced excellent material pointing out the faults of the Tories, pointing out the faults of the austerity programme, and even the faults of capitalism. But it has not yet taken the step of pointing the way to the future and pointing out the alternative. At our meeting on the general, of the General Council last week, we agreed to produce a new document that points out the faults of capitalism, but points out the need for a socialist economic alternative as the way forward. We agreed as well, comrades, to take the first steps in building a coalition of the willing in Northern Ireland. I and the General Secretary have been tasked to sit down with Unite, the FBU and PCS in Northern Ireland to lay the foundation stones for that alternative. And I think that will be a significant step forward for us. We agreed to relaunch a propaganda campaign against the austerity program that has been implemented in the North. And I must tell you, that's against a background of silence by the trade union movement for the last year. Where you have had struggles, we have had none. Where you have had unions that are prepared to stand, we have had none bar PCS in Northern Ireland. And that has left a vacuum we now have to try and fill and rebuild the confidence of people that a real difference can be made. So we have had to relaunch a propaganda campaign. And on top of that, we have now taken, undertaken to prepare for a conference of resistance to austerity in the early autumn. That conference of resistance will not be a talking shop to point out that the Tories are bad. It will have to be an organising point to prepare for action to defeat the Tories' cuts. But I think, comrades, the most important task that faces socialists, that faces NIPSA, and that faces yourselves is this. That it is the rearming of our movement. It is beginning a real discussion and debate within the movement about what the next steps are, and NIPSA has agreed to undertake that task. What we want to do is reach out to people across the movement, to the individual members, not just to the tops, not just to union conferences, not just to the activists, but the membership layer on very, very important points. And they are reflected in the discussions that you are having here today. We have a little bit of a similar problem to the problem you have. In Northern Ireland, our trade union leaders are 100% opposed to Tory cuts, utterly opposed to them. They just will not move when it's a DUP cut or a Sinn Féin cut. It's a little bit like saying we are opposed to the Tory cuts, but if a Labour Council gets rid of jobs, we have nothing to say. And what we have to say to our movement is, if a Labour Council gets rid of jobs, if Sinn Féin gets rid of jobs, 
If the DUP get rid of jobs, we will rip their goddamn heads off and we will fight them as much as we would fight the Tories. It really doesn't matter whether austerity wears green or whether it wears orange, or for that matter, in Scotland, whether it wears the tartan of the SNP. We have to fight a unified campaign against all the political advocates of uh, austerity. And that is a task, that discussion has to be had with our members in the North, and we are beginning that. We also have to look, I think, at what forms of action we can take to turn the austerity programme around, to stop its implementation, because that is a difficult issue. We have, I think, been thrown back as a movement. It's already been mentioned how November the 30th led to a situation of a loss of confidence, quite deliberately, I think, as, as pointed out by Chris. There was a deliberate decision taken to take us down that road and people would lose confidence. So we have to rebuild our fighting capacity. We have to rebuild that confidence. We have to rebuild the feeling that you can fight and you can win. And for that, we need a coherent program. What we are raising within NIPSA and what we are raising within the wider trade union movement is first of all a broad coalition of the trade unions, of welfare campaigners, of genuine community activists, of political parties and political activists who are genuinely against the cuts and a, and a, a coalition of all those who are willing to fight. We are prepared to take all forms of action. Local strikes have their place. Campaigns have their place. Direct action has its place. Political action has its place. All forms of militant action have their place. But I think this conference is absolutely right to put at the head of all of those, all those options, the key point at this time, the unifying point, the real strength of our movement would be the call for a general strike. That is the weapon we must employ in the near future because the general strike will bring millions onto the streets. It will challenge the Northern Ireland Assembly and even bring it down if that's what needs to happen. It will challenge the Tories in Westminster and it will begin the process of reversing the austerity cuts that we all face. Again, comrades, fraternal greetings to this conference. I have every confidence that we will build and we in NIPSA are glad to be linking with you for the future. Thank you. Patrick, our final uh, speaker is uh, Jackie Berry from the uh, Steering Committee who has got a special appeal. I'm afraid Jackie's going to have to be as quick as possible, uh, punchy as possible, okay? Okay. Well, um, my name's Jackie Berry. I am uh, a Unison Young Members Officer and I've also recently been elected to the Unison National Executive <laughs> Committee. But... Uh, but, but I'm speaking today and I'm standing for re-election for the steering committee of the Shop Stewards Network in, uh, in, in a personal capacity. And first of all, I want to say how refreshing it is to come here today and listen to the examples of the heroic battles uh, that, that are going on up and down the country. Just last week, I was at, uh, at Unison Conference on the conference floor watching and listening uh, the, the cowardly leadership of our union uh, squirm and manoeuvre to avoid giving any sort of national expression to the battle which is currently being conducted uh, in defence of pay. In the face of relentless austerity, coordinated, generalised strike action is essential in halting the offensive uh, by, by our employers and their representatives in government. Uh, and in spite of the, the TUC passing Motion 5 at their, at their conference, it's become crystal clear that the leaderships of, of our unions, with the honourable exceptions, are intent in holding back uh, and dissipating the anger of our members. And our role as a network, our role has to be uh, giving expression to our, that anger. Our role has to be acting as a pressure point on, on the leaderships of the trade unions. Our role has to be uh, giving an expression to a movement that is sending a clear message to the tops of the TUC, to the tops of our unions, that if you refuse to wage a battle against austerity, then step aside and make way for those who will. But we can't do this on thin air. 
Uh, despite the heroic struggles of the NSSN uh, over the last year, the network is still living a uh, hand-to-mouth existence. This conference, for example, cost £4,000 uh, to put on, and I know that we've all spent money uh, getting here, and, we, and, we, and we've paid our, our delegation fees. Uh, but if each of the 400 registered delegates uh, here today made a, a further one-off donation of £10 to the bucket collection that will be uh, on the door, that will more than uh, that will more than cover our costs. So I know that some delegates are in a much better position to contribute £10 than others, but I urge you all to give as generous, gener generously as you possibly can. Now, one-off donations are, of course, welcome, uh, but if we are serious about developing a network, strengthening the lever by which we can act uh, as, a, as a pressure point on our leaderships, we need small, regular uh, donations. And in the back of your delegates' packs, you will find a standing order form uh, asking to, to, to allow you to make a small, regular donation to, uh, to, to, to the Shop Stewards Network. And if you're not sure... If you, about taking on another financial commitment, um, and if you want to take it away and think about it, then that's fine. Um, we're, but we're not asking for huge amounts. I, as a staff nurse, uh, I can expect to earn a basic rate of pay of £10.83 an hour, and today I'm pledging uh, a £5 a month regular donation to the Shop Stewards Network. £5 a month, or just under half hour's wages. And, my thinking is half hour's work to develop a network uh, that's going to act as a, as, as a pinpoint of pressure in the battle against austerity. Well, I would call that a bargain. Now, finally, this isn't just about individuals making personal sacrifices. This is about building a movement and a war chest uh, to go with it. So if you take one thing, just one thing away uh, from, from the conference today, if the insipid approach of your union leaders uh, to pay mean that you are not in a position to make a personal donation, then please take back the delegate packs to your, to your branches and show them page two uh, of, of the delegate pack containing an appeal to affiliate to the Shop Stewards Network. When we go back to work on, on Monday, um, after today, in spite of everything that's going on with pay, with cutbacks, with, with, a, with a pernicious atmosphere of, of, of bullying uh, and, and witch hunts, when we go back on Monday after the examples that we've heard today, we can go back in with our, with our tails up. Solidarity is not just a nice idea, as Chris Boff said. It is the lifeblood of our movement. But solidarity costs money. So I would urge everyone here to put their money where their mouth is um, and by either donating, affiliating or both to the Shop Stewards Network. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thanks, Jackie, and hope everybody responds.